right, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Hannah Dunn, and I'm a senior psychology major here. Um, and I've been in a whole, both involved in a whole slew of things, you know, pretty much like everyone else in here. We've been in sports, we do theater, we do whatever. Um, but today I'm going to talk about something that I'm very excited about and very passionate about, and I think it's something that every one of us can learn from. Now, in general, I'm a very passionate person. It actually sometimes gets me in trouble. Um, but being passionate, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, because I want to change the world, but then when I can't change the world right now in my own time, I just, I just get so frustrated. Um, an example of this was my junior year. Um, I wanted to do mission work really bad, and I just wanted to go change the world. And I had trouble going and sitting in the classroom for an hour, just sitting there learning. You know, which is still important, but in my mind, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. And I wasn't making a difference in people's lives that I wanted to. Um, I also really struggle with our world and our society, though. Um, sometimes we get these messages, at least I do, that I have to have a 9 to 5 job, I have to have a family, I have to live myself, and I have to have money to be happy. And I think sometimes even Christians um, buy into this idea as well. You know, we have a 9 to 5 job, and then we just simply go to church on Sundays, and that's it. Um, and this, again, this is a message for everyone, you know. And I think, I have a problem with that. You know, life is so short, and I want to use every minute of my day that I can use for other people. Um, in 1 John 3, 16 through 18, it says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And Acts 2 talks about how the Christians sold everything and helped each other and everything. And I really wish we could do that today. Maybe not literally sell our possessions, but we live so much for other people that we don't even think about ourselves. In Matthew 25, 40, it says, The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And in Matthew 25, 44 through 46, Then they also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked, or sick or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he'll answer them, saying, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into the everlasting punishment of the righteousness and righteous into, into eternal life. I really like this Bible verse because it talks about some simple groups that we can love on. The hungry, the thirsty, those that are in prison. And these are just a couple groups. There's so many others in our world right now. So I got a story from a woman named Andrea, uh, originally from Colorado, now a resident of Uganda. How she got there is a pretty uh, crazy miracle. She went there as a student for class credit to learn how to do microfinancing. And while she was there, she found an orphanage where the children were being abused and neglected really badly. Over the course of just months, um, witnessing the day-to-day -day life of the kids, um, the abuse they faced, I fell in love with them, you know, they became um, so much more than just, you know, needy kids that you would see on commercials or, you know, they became people and they're kids and they have personalities and smiles and beautiful faces. I knew that God has a bigger plan for them and that they shouldn't be trapped in the situation of neglect and abuse. And her heart broke when she called her dad and said, I'm not coming home. Her dad said, you get on the plane right now. She said, no, if I don't do something, who will? So she stuck around, pestered the Ugandan government long enough until they shut down that orphanage. And then they handed 40 children to her care. <coughs> Andrea didn't know what she was doing. She did something. And now there's an orphanage in Uganda, Uganda called Musan. It houses over 120 children. And Andrew is the head of this orphanage. On September 16, 2008, we actually got to move the first 40 kids from that other orphanage. And I remember bringing the kids to Musana, and they lined up, and we said go, and they all ran to their name tags and jumped in their beds and, like, had the biggest smile on their faces. Not one of them had ever slept in a bed before. And that night, I remember going around and giving every single one of them like a kiss on the forehead and a hug and saying, like, you're home now, you're safe, um, I love you, God loves you, and it was the best, by far the best moment in my life and the moment where I knew that God had such big plans for these kids and that these kids were going to be 
the future leaders of Uganda and the future leaders of this world. I woke up this morning, saw a world full of trouble now, I thought, how do you ever get so far down? How's it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven. Everybody is capable of making a difference, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what your job is, no matter what situation you're in. Every single person is capable of doing something and making the world. Today, I want to challenge you to do something. Is there a group of people or a mission that you are you want to serve? That could be orphans. It could be elderly. It could be people in sexual trafficking. It could be in the world, and it could be in your college right now, and it could be both. Life is short, guys. At the end of the day, the only thing that we can take, on, take with us when we die is people. We can't take medals, we can't take our grades, we can't take your dream job. And guys, at your college, it is set up to equip us to do these things. It literally says equip in our mission statement. Um, and as a senior, I am so thankful for all of the things I've been involved in. From all the different activities, to the faculty and staff that have loved me, mentored me, um, laughed with me, made memories with me, to my friends, you know, Omega Phi and Kingsman and everyone else. And all of that together has made me who I am today, so that I can make a difference in our world. And just for those of you who maybe struggled with what I struggled with, um, sitting in a classroom, wanting to change the world, don't forget that you can change the world right here, right now. Um, the in-between stages before you do that big thing is just as important as the next thing. But either way, please search. If you don't know what you're supposed to do right now, that's fine. But use your time to try new things. And as I learned in Dr. Steph Lyons, philosophy class my sophomore year, find your vocation, not just your occupation. In other words, find what your calling is and not just a job. So what are you going to do? Thank you.